Mandalorian is a very interesting TV show because it has a hero who wears a mask and what's interesting is he never takes off his mask right there are other TV and movie superheroes like uh, Spider-Man who wears a mask Iron Man who wears a mask Batman who wears a mask but they all at some point take their mask off but with Mandalorian uh, with the character of uh, Din Djarin uh, in the new Disney uh, series that came out at the end of last year, he never takes the mask off, right? So I want to kind of talk about kind of the, the what's unique about the Mandalorian TV show and also give some theological reflections on that. Uh, I'm Reverend Emmanuel and as you, as you know, I like talking about theology, culture and spirituality. Uh, so if you're new, new to this channel, welcome and uh, I'd appreciate it if you are willing to uh, like or subscribe to this channel and, and fo follow me along. So, to understand the Mandalorian worldview, we have to understand an important phrase that they have, which is, a Mandalorian is not a race, it is a creed. Din Jaran says, Mandalorian is not a race, it is a creed. So. What do we mean by that? So, a race is something that you're born into, right? A creed is a set of beliefs that you adopt and you live by. So, for example, a religion is a creed. People of different races can come together and agree on a certain set of principles and beliefs and agree to live according to it. Uh, in uh, the Mandalorian TV show, when Din Djarin is asked to leave his weapon while going into a room to see somebody Din Djarin says no I cannot leave I cannot part with my weapon because it is a part of my religion right so that's the aspect of creed the having a belief that you are willing to abide by uh, Din Djarin is a character who actually was uh, a as a child uh, he was uh, his parents were massacred uh, by the emp emp Empire and then Din Djarin was orphaned. So the Mandalorians took him to be a part of their community called the Foundlings, where young kids are taken and they are given a home and they are kind of nurtured within the creed of being a Mandalorian. So that's where the Din Djarin character comes from, an orphan who found a new home among the Foundlings and became a Mandalorian, right? So one key aspect of their creed is they, have, they all have a mask and they're never supposed to take the mask off. Uh, in the TV show, even when an attractive woman wants him to take off his mask, he says no. And because that is what it means to be true to his creed. Why do they have this? Why do the Mandalorians have this creed, right? Of not taking the mask off. Uh, an aspect of that is within the Mandalorian culture, there is a very high value of collective identity. They're, they are individuals, but at the same time, they value the collective identity. Uh, and that is such a stark contrast uh, to kind of a lot of the superheroes that we see within kind of, a, kind of individualistic, individualistic cultures that we live in. For example, uh, Entertainment Weekly uh, ran this article about uh, the Avengers, right? And the Avengers movie series made $16 billion. And Ed Entertainment Weekly said, the whole of the Avengers series rested on uh, Tony Stark as a primary kind of character that ran all the way through. Uh, and what endeared people to Tony Stark, says Entertainment Weekly, is that he is a narcissistic uh, billionaire who kind of uh, who's also a playboy, right? Uh, so his his uh, his preoccupation with himself, uh, his money, and his fame are things that he values, and our culture is so kind of fascinated by that kind of an individualistic lifestyle uh, that we wanted to kind of look into what would happen to him. Like that's kind of the, what, what, what makes kind of Tony Stark in some sense attractive, at least at the beginning of the Avengers uh, series. Uh, in Mandalorian is the exact opposite. Din Djarin is the opposite of Tony Stark. Uh, Din Djarin doesn't care about money. He doesn't care about fame. He doesn't care about women, right? So that's the code by which, uh, by which uh, Din Djarin is uh, living. Uh, in fact, even when he makes money by doing this bounty hunting work, he contributes a majority of that back to the foundlings uh, 
uh, so that other orphans like himself can be taken care of. So what we find here is, to be a Mandalorian is to have affiliation with a creed, uh, to align with a creed, and to commit to a community. So, let's look at it from a theological perspective. When we look at it from a theological perspective, what do we see there? So, from a kind of Christian theological perspective, Christians have another creed as well. Um, in fact, uh, we call it the Apostles' Creed, right? Um, I'll, I'll provide a link to the Apostles' Creed below so you can you can uh, read it. Uh, and the Apostles' Creed basically affirms uh, kind of a Trinitarian view of God. Uh, it affirms Jesus as being the Divine Son of God. Uh, it affirms the Holy Spirit's work in our midst to cre creating a kingdom of love and peace uh, that looks forward to the new creation, right? So that's kind of the overall structure of the Apostles' Creed. And from a Christian standpoint, that is important. In fact, Tim Keller is a pastor who was once interviewed by uh, New York Times. And the reporter asked him, hey, as Christians, different people seem to have different beliefs. Like, for example, there are some people that believe women shouldn't be in leadership in the church. There are other people that believe women can be in leadership in the church. Uh, so there's different types of opinions about different things within kind of the broader Christian faith. Uh, so this reporter asked Tim Keller, so what does it really mean to be a Christian? Like at what point do you like draw a line and say, okay, this is when you're a Christian, this is when you're not. And Tim Keller said, the Apostles' Creed. If everyone believes in the Apostles' Creed and I'll agree to align themselves to that, then at that point, uh, that person is a uh, Christian. If somebody dis disagrees with the Apostles' Creed about Trinity or the divinity of Jesus or the work of the Holy Spirit, then uh, that person uh, at that point maybe ceases to be uh, a, a, a Christian, right? So that's so, which is why the idea of the creed, the set of beliefs that we adhere to, is an important piece, uh, which is there within kind of the Mandalorian culture and within uh, kind of the church or, or, or the Christian culture. Thomas A. Kempis, who's a prior that lived in the 13th century, wrote this book called The Imitations of Christ. And in that book, he actually has this interesting phrase. He says, happy is the man who lives in obedience. When we look at that phrase, we think, look at that and think from kind of an individualistic standpoint, that makes no sense, right? How can somebody be happy if they have to obey to somebody else? Isn't happiness the ability to do whatever you want? Uh, so that's kind of the, the an aspect of where the sense of obedience to a higher authority or to a creed uh, becomes a paradoxical thing. Uh, how can somebody be happy when they are in obedience? So when you look at kind of the Mandalorian culture, uh, Din Djarin is happy to be under this, in obedience to this creed, to always wear the helmet, to say no to fame, women, money. Why is that? It is because he is grateful to be a part of the community of Mandalorians. If the Mandalorians had not taken him in as an orphan, he may have died, right? So it is that sense of gratitude that brings him to a place where he is happy to be in obedience to that creed. So when you look at it from a theological perspective, what you find is, uh, as Christians, we too live under some uh, a sense of obedience to uh, Christ as our King. And what makes us happy in that obedience is if we are to be grateful that Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. And so we have been adopted into God's family. And when we have that sense of gratitude in our mind, it is only then our ability, uh, our, our obedience becomes a form of happiness to us. Uh, the sense of the community that the Mandalorians value, the sense of the collective identity that the, that the Mandalorians value, uh, we have that in, in the sense of the adoption into God's family. Uh, in fact, Jesus in John 13, uh, 34, 35 says, a new commandment I give you, love each other the way I loved you. Uh, and uh, then you will be seen as being my disciples. In, in the Mandalorian, they value this collective identity where when um, Din Djarin gets into trouble, his community comes around to help him, uh, which is how the church too is supposed to operate, where when one person is going through a difficulty, uh, we come around to help that person. So, to summarize kind of the theological points here, the Christian life is not a life that is like Tony Stark, Iron Man. It's not a life of fame, uh, 
money and, and women. Rather, it's a life of obedience, the way uh, Din Djarin lives in the TV show Mandalorian, right? So, the, and there are three aspects to this life. One is um, an alignment with a creed, with a set of beliefs. Uh, and, and for Christians, it is that Christ is Lord. Uh, and that the Holy Spirit is creating a kingdom of um, the kingdom of love and peace, and, and two, the aspect is the sense of uh, valuing our collective identity. Uh, with Mandalorians, it is the valuing the guild and the, and the people that are from the foundlings. With Christians, it's the sense of valuing the community within uh, as children of God. Um, and three, it's the aspect of obedience. Um, and not just obedience, to be happy in obedience, as, as Thomas A. Kempis said. And that kind of happiness and obedience to Christ comes only when we find ourselves in a place of gratitude uh, that Christ died for us on the cross. And so we have been adopted into God's family. And so we value that. Anyways, so that's all I've got on Mandalorian today from kind of a theological perspective. Uh, if you like my video, uh, please subscribe to my channel so you'll get notified anytime a new video comes. Uh, and if you want me to talk about the, the theology of some other TV or a movie show that you like, uh, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to kind of talk about that in the next video. So until I see you in the, see you in the next video, bye.